We have an, a panel of experts from across the country that are here reviewing applications for our Challenge for a Healthier Louisiana program. We have about 12 experts that are um, have a, a wonderful background. They, they have a variety of uh, expertise in nutrition, uh, kinesiology, um, some practitioners in grant making, some practitioners um, in grant making specifically on health and, and active living initiatives. So they all to get together and um, looking at these projects from across the state and trying to decide which ones they think are the most likely to be successful for us to implement. Challenge for Healthier Louisiana is the newest grant program of Blue Cross Blue Shield Louisiana Foundation. A year ago, the board of directors announced that we were committed to put $10 million towards healthy living initiatives for the state to help uh, really reduce obesity across the state. The $10 million had to be matched, though, with um, money in the community. So basically we're looking to fund $20 million worth of initiatives. However, we received 49 applications that totaled $110 million in initiatives. So we don't know what's going to end up being funded, but it'll certainly be um, significant and our hope is, is, and the panel will be able to help tell us, that we will significantly uh, shape the health of the state over the next three years. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation is the largest health-related philanthropic organization in our country, so a major private health funder in the United States. Our role with them is to serve as a national program office for their largest community-based grant portfolio under their childhood obesity community uh, grant portfolio. It's been a great experience. Um, in my role as a project officer, and in our relationship with RWJF, we are involved in a lot of grant review processes, so not just the grant management and technical assistance provision um, once grantees are, are awarded, but we also work with RWJF and other funders, um, some of which are other blues, um, to help them do grant selection and actual grants management and technical assistance. Um, so this process has been really great because anytime I'm involved with a grants review process, I learn Learn so much that I can then take um, and apply to other kinds of uh, grant grant programs that are funded through other other funders. We're seeing things uh, grants that where people want to uh, you know change the built environment. They want more trails. They want more parks. Um, we're seeing a lot of things that are focused on obviously uh, dietary components. So you know improving food sources, whether it be through the schools, whether it be through um, you know, programs that we have going on in the state, expanding them, um, you know, reaching a lot of different counties and municipalities. We're seeing a lot of things for physical activity, again, like the built environment kinds of things, um, interventions through schools. We're seeing um, um, parks, recreation, specific kinds of physical activities that they uh, want people to get involved in. So we're seeing just a broad range of um, applications. I think that these grants are going to be great for the state of Louisiana. Um, clearly we have an obesity problem here um, that affects both adults and children and a lot of the grants are focusing on children and these grants really have potential to do a lot for the children of Louisiana. There's many deserts out there where there's not uh, good access to, to, to food, there's not good access for physical activities, not a lot of physical activity opportunities and some of these grants are going to give these communities um, facilities and resources that they've never had before. And so um, a lot of these facilities and resources are going to allow children to have more physical activity in their lives, allow them to have more fruits and vegetables, and it's, it's going to affect things at many, many different levels. So not just uh, individually affecting the child, but their family, their environment, policy changes. So I believe that this is going to have a huge impact on the children of Louisiana. It's exciting. I've seen a lot of great ideas, a lot of people talking about changing their communities in, in really big ways, you know, and in really changing the way their communities work, the way they're designed, and that's exciting because, you know, that's, those are the things that make a big difference. I think it has the potential to generate some new programs and some new um, ways of doing things that can be used in other communities. So I think they're great pilot projects that can then be moved somewhere else. Um, and then I think it's exciting to see Louisiana doing something big and different in this area because so often we are behind and our numbers are poor and, and our infrastructure is not as good as in other states. And I think this makes a difference because it's, it's a new program, it's a big program and we're doing it first. And so I think it kind of puts us 
on the cutting edge, which is exciting because we're not always there. It's been uh, pretty exciting. Uh, I've, I've really um, I've enjoyed being a part of this process. It's been uh, very, um, what's the word? Um, it, it's, it's really been inspirational, I think, in some degree. To, to feel like that I'm, I'm part of a, a process that's really going to uh, impact a, a lot of communities and a lot of people in Louisiana. I think uh, uh, my, my research interest is really in, the, in the, the South and sort of alleviating health disparities that, that are really uh, prominent here in the South. Uh, and so to, to feel like that I'm actually, uh, for some degree, maybe not on the front line, but, but in, you know, close enough that I can see um, uh, change happening. As a researcher, I'm usually you know, sort of a, a step removed and, 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 and doing analysis and doing studies of, of projects. And so to feel like that I'm actually uh, a part of a process that's, that's going to, to sort of provide some funds to some communities to really make differences uh, is, is really exciting for me. As I, I look at what we're doing, this is, you know, a lot of the, the, the projects and even the process of letting communities sort of identify you know, what, what the needs are and how to how best to alleviate those needs. I mean, that's right at the top of best practices. And so to be able to, uh, to sort of take this model and go back to, to Texas or anywhere else and sort of try to implement some of these same approaches, I, I think, uh, is, you know, has a lot of potential. And in fact, uh, you know, to, to be able to fund at the level that, that's happening, you know, that the Blue Cross Blue Shield Foundation is doing, uh, it, it really provides the opportunity to, to make that difference. I mean, this isn't, these aren't really tiny projects. These are projects that really do have the opportunity to make impacts. I think that this program that the foundation is implementing is a game changer in Louisiana. It's going to have an enormous impact. Um, the way that the coalitions are being built across the state is really encouraging. I think bodes well for some long-term systemic change. I think the plan and the foundation have a lot to be proud of um, in being a real leader in this state. Oklahoma and Louisiana aren't all that different. We are a very rural state, we're very low income and lots and lots of health disparities. We also fight with y'all in Mississippi for the most obese as far as children. So I think things can certainly be um, translated. Of course, um, what you really hope with communities is that they're tailored culturally appropriate and relevant to the community. So you would certainly not just want to take what was done here and just stick it in some town in Oklahoma, but um, you know, make sure that you've got the community partners and that it is culturally appropriate for that group as well. Doing community-based funding is really about a partnership that the funder and technical assistance providers develop with communities. What we know about doing this kind of policy and environmental change work in communities is you can't just give them the, the monetary resources. They really need um, folks that can provide best practices, can help troubleshoot when issues arise during the community. And so developing that relationship between funder, technical assistance provider, and communities is so important. And what better time to start than during the application phase. I think the other great thing about this process has been um, the engagement of the Pennington Biomedical Research Center. They obviously bring so much expertise in terms of getting these grantees off on the right foot so that they at the end of the grant period they're going to have some outcomes to show or at least have attempted to measure those outcomes. My hat's off to the Blue Cross Blue Shield of, of Louisiana because they have enough foresight to see that the kinds of changes that are need to take place in terms of the health of the population relative to healthy eating and active living are um, not individual choices per se, but that's part of the picture. Then they've been trying to, to um, if you will, make awards that look at more comprehensive and, um, and multidisciplinary approaches um, across you know, policy environment and, and, and also in, in uh, the setting and then obviously affecting individuals. So it's not, in my opinion, it's not just a set of boutique interventions that they're going to fund, but they're actually funding things that have sustainability and long-term and lasting effects uh, for this state. And, I, and that's quite exciting, actually. And I want to run back to my state of Tennessee and, and tell them we ought to do the same thing. Well, I was really impressed by the, the level of sophistication that we received for the, uh, for the grants. You know, we have some beautiful projects that uh, hopefully will get funded by the Blue Cross uh, Foundation. 
and we're just uh, yeah we're just very excited about it. We can leverage the uh, the money and the resources available within the state to get further dollars from you know federal sources and sources outside of Louisiana to really help with this problem. So it's really around capacity building, getting the communities to develop their projects from the ground up. You know, rather than having a top-down approach and saying, you know, the scientists say we need to do this or the government says this, a lot of these projects are coming from the communities. And that's the exciting part. Our goal was to achieve change in nutrition and physical activity within the next three years. But there had to be a sustainability component. So these projects couldn't just be relying on the funding that they were given at this one time. Uh, and so that's what's most exciting. A lot of these uh, monies are going for infrastructure improvements, like improving parks, the equipment at playgrounds, things like that. And so those are things that aren't going to go away. They might need a little bit of maintenance throughout the next few years. Uh, also some of the policy changes, so really trying to uh, improve food served in the cafeterias and these sorts of things that could be supported with uh, the ongoing collaboration that's being formed. It's just an unprecedented amount of money that the Blue Cross Foundation has given toward obesity, community obesity prevention in Louisiana. Um, essentially, the board has pledged $10 million to fund communities across the state. And I mean, what's really exciting is in each of these, the communities that will be funded, they've gotten an equal amount of, of grant support or, or match support. So really, we're talking about $20 million going to communities in Louisiana toward obesity prevention. And I think the other really exciting and novel aspect of this is that it's community obesity prevention. So it isn't just, you know, a couple of programs for kids, but it's how can we transform the community environment with environmental changes, infrastructure changes, program and, and policy changes to, I mean, to really make a difference. Um, the specific targets for the grant program are in changing health, make healthier eating uh, patterns as well as physical activity. And so grantees um, could target one or both of those depending on what their community needs were and you know, depending on the partners that they pull together. So we're not, we don't necessarily think that we're going to see changes in obesity levels or BMI, kind of what we measure scientifically over the course of the grant period. But we know that if people eat healthier and if, if they're more physically active, then that's, that will come and, and uh, you know, will be transformative for our state. We absolutely want to change the health of the state uh, in terms of making it um, a healthier state to live, much more active state. Um, our goal is to see that the dollars that are spent on the programs um, actually make the place, the state, a healthier place to live. And, um, and I, I feel pretty certain that the coalitions that have been built from the, the projects that we see before us are actually going to be able to implement that and do that. And it's really going to change the culture of the state um, and the way we think about how we live.